it's neat that uh, I think back now and, and, and Snow West Magazine is 40 years old. magazine back in 1974. Uh, I don't suppose that I thought in the future 40 years ahead. I just, you know, when you're, when you're working and trying to make a living and trying to create a company and a, and a brand image of Snow West, I don't think I thought a whole lot about 40 years from now. We've existed 40 years because of the good people that have supported us, our, our readers, our advertisers. And this year we just said, you know what? We gotta show our appreciation by giving something back. And let's give something back in a big way. Let's, let's have our, our best giveaway programs. You know, we're giving away, in the course of this year alone, we're giving away five snowmobiles uh, throughout the year. We're having a big celebration in West Yellowstone uh, to sort of wrap things up. And during that celebration, we're just, we're, we're, we want to give back to the public. We want people to come out and ride and have a good time and spend some time with us during the snow shows that we do, one in Boise, Idaho, one in uh, uh, Salt Lake. We, uh, we want people come and, and, and enjoy their time with us. We're trying to make this a year where we show our appreciation to the people who have made us so successful, who bought our magazines, uh, who've advertised in our magazines, and so we're going to do our best to, just to make it a fun year, a great year. You know, with our 40th anniversary here, we just kind of want to make it known that we've we've been around for a long time. You know, we've been the voice of the West for a lot longer than people realize and people think. Um, as far as national magazines go, Snow West is the longest running national magazine out there. We've been around the longest. We've had that focus on the western market, on deep snow riding, on mountain riding, on long tracks, lightweight sleds, aftermarket modifications. What are my thoughts about Snow West Magazine in the next 40 years? I'm excited about it. With the changes that we've seen just in the last 10 years in snowmobiling, those changes will continue to come with machines, that we've never seen before, never imagined. Snow West will be the leader and the innovator. We have a very close relationship with the manufacturers to provide input, to help develop those new machines. They will continue to be more powerful, lighter, more responsive. It's, it's exciting just to try and imagine where it can go. One of my favorite stories uh, that illustrates uh, the editorial emphasis that I insisted on was when I hired Steve James. And I remember uh, the first winter that I was training him and we were in Island Park and climbing a mountain that we referred to as Garner Canyon. And it was on the other side of Two Top Mountain, so very close to Two Top Mountain, but kind of on the west side. And it was very, really pretty there, a lot of snow, uh, some trees, and uh, we were up there putting these snow machines through their paces and doing the photography on these new models. But I had emphasized to Steve and another fellow that was with us that, that I had also hired about the same time as Steve, that look, when we, when we test these machines, we need to keep our rear ship in mind the consumer, the buyer of the snowmobiles, the people who read our magazines. That's who we represent. Steve evidently took this to heart and, uh, uh, and we worked hard in ph photographing all these new machines and uh, writing them, putting them through their paces. And uh, sometime later, whether it was um, weeks or a month or two, when we were writing articles for the next the first issue of the next season where, where all these stories would be Steve brings me this article and I and I specifically remember how he worded this one sentence 
It said, in effect, uh, this model is so heavy that when you take it to the mountain and you get it stuck in our deep western snow, just put a for sale sign on it. I looked at that and I thought, gosh, do we want to get that asserted? Do we want to get that brand? We talked about it and I let that sentence ride and, and the flavor of the whole article. Well, needless to say, after the publication of the magazine, we got a lot of phone calls from that company questioning our editorial emphasis. But we held our grounds and, and uh, you know, I just had to kind of shut my eyes and, and let, let that phone burn my ears, but we stuck to our guns. And that is one example how we earned the credibility of the reader. One of the rides that uh, I really cherished, of course, was uh, a ride that even people in the Midwest, back through Minneapolis and so forth, always had to take when they came to uh, this part of the country, was uh, to go up to Top. We would, uh, that was a, a trip that uh, you mentioned to Top, uh, then it automatically, to most of the people that came out here to ride, they knew exactly what you were talking about. and. Uh, that kind of identified West Yellowstone as being the uh, capital of the snowmobiling. I remember the real, really the first um, ride that I went on, the first real kind of ride when Steve and I were kind of one-on-one. -on -one. And we're up at Island Park, <clears throat> and um, he was kind of teaching me a little bit. One of the things that he said was, don't ever ride into where you don't want to walk out from and then we immediately rode 15, 20 miles way back in there and I'd still be walking out today if, if we, something would ever happen because um, we rode a long way back in. But it was, a good, it was a good experience and I think that's one of the reasons I really like to ride Island Park is because that's where I kind of cut my teeth. We were up at the cabin and they, they had this, it was a Western chapter meeting so a bunch of representatives from the Western states getting together and talking about uh, land use and all that and that that Indy 500 was up there and my dad was riding it and they got together and uh, my dad put on his leather suit that had Snowmobile West logo on it, you know, blue leather suit with these yellow gold looking stripes down the sleeves and they took off on a ride you know and it was Craig Kazeer and Steve Jaynes and kind of a bunch of crazy mountain riders for the time and uh, they came back late that afternoon, like about, about time it was getting dark, about five o'clock. And that sled, that Indy 500 was just trashed, like smashed. The hood was all cracked up, the windshield was gone, handlebars were bent, the, the metal skis were bent, the trailing arms were bent. I think they had to tow it for a while, but they, they got it running and got it out. But I just remember sitting there, you know, I was just a little kid. You know, 86, I was probably uh, eight years old. And uh, just sitting there watching these guys talk about mountain riding and talk about how my dad and Craig were going up this chute side by side, kind of racing each other up. And my dad was trying to outdo Kazir. And he looked over and Kazir turned out. And so he was looking at Kazir and he kept going up the mountain. And he looked up the hill and he realized why Kazir turned out. He went right into a rock garden. He turned out as quick as he could, but he couldn't do it in time. And he hit the rocks. and. Sled started rolling and he slid down the chute and that sled's just tumbling down next to him and, and these guys were just laughing about it. And I'm just sitting there as a kid thinking like, you trashed this brand new snowmobile and you guys are laughing? That's awesome. That's hilarious. Uh, that's, that's always been one of my favorite stories. Years ago I was riding with Brian Peterson and Craig Kazir. Now Brian at the time was president of the Wyoming Snowmobile Association and Craig was president of the Utah State Snowmobile Association. We were up on near Mount Jefferson and we were doing some climbing. It was spring riding, so the snow was pretty hard and set up. And, and uh, Brian was head, headed up a steep hill and, and there was a, it, it got to where it was a little bit steeper than he wanted, but there was no good place to figure out where he wanted to go or what, where he could, you know, where he needed to go. And there was one little bush up there that uh, the snow had just sort of flattened out right back by that bush. So Brian pulled up and 
parked right on the bush so he could stop and, and survey the landscape to see where he needed to go. Well, he thought he was secure on that bush because it was a flat spot. I came up next to him, just a little bit above him, and when I stopped, my sled slid right down and sort of pushed his little bit towards the edge of the bush uh, so the two of us could be on that one little flat spot. And we were sitting there with our machines together, and then Kazir comes up, and he pulls above me, and his sled slides down, bumps me, which bumps his sled, and so Kazir and I are on the bush, and Brian's rolling down the hill, just cussing at us, you know, because his sled just tumbled, tumbled off the bush. Well, when I think back 30 years ago, I was just barely starting to ride snowmobiles, but, um, you know, your, your snowmobiles were, they were really, they were short tracks, they were, um, you just really couldn't take them a lot of places, you'd get stuck. Even on the flat snow, if it were deep, you'd get stuck. And so let alone going into the back country where the, you know, steep terrain or whatever, but that's just slowly evolved. Um, you know, each year, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, it just evolved more and more and more to where now, you know, there's a lot of snowmobiles that are built, obviously, for that kind of country, and that's what people really enjoy riding. <laughs> My experience in riding with them was mostly in the Island Park area at um, going out from the Snow West Cabin. One of my favorites was the Two Top Ride. I love doing that. That was that's a lot of fun and it's just a beautiful ride and it's you know I, it wasn't stressful to me. It was my you know I could that was kind of my level. But there was another ride that was that was <laughs> very um, I don't want to say stressful. It was a lot of fun, but it was really hard to me anyway. Probably not to, to anybody else there, but, but to me it was. And that was when we went, did the lion's head ride back there. And, and um, that was a lot of fun, but it was really hard. I think I even crashed that day. <laughs> you know. Just to be able to go ride is, is a joy for me. And, and the type of setting that I like the most is when there's a new snow and the snow is falling heavy and it's starting to build up on the trees can't see more than 50 yards and it's so quiet and peaceful out that you can hear the snow hitting your helmet and your coat. It's just that peaceful and quiet. It doesn't matter where I ride, that's the kind of weather I like to ride. It's just nice, fresh, deep snow, deep powder where you can just carve and flow and feel like you're just floating through the air, so to speak, on your snow. Myself and the, and the small staff we had, we were up uh, near West Yellowstone and we were uh, kind of had our work done, so we were just riding. And uh, I'd, I'd always tell the guys that I was with, now be careful when you come to something that you can't see, um, you know, there might be something on the other side that's not good. And uh, I was leading and sure enough I came to a kind of a, a little hill and a jump and it, and it went straight off, not very really far, maybe 20 feet. But uh, I, I was leading and I plopped down there and I thought, oh no, those guys are right behind me, they're not very experienced riders. If I don't move, they're going to come down right down on top of me. Fortunately, well unfortunately, I didn't think that in time to move. But the next guy came down and plopped right next to me instead of on top of me. And the next one came down right to the side of him. We were lucky. And uh, the, the third rider, when he hit, he hit his face into the windshield and the handlebars and kind of bloodied his nose a little bit. But uh, that was a learning experience for all of us. Well, I studied journalism in college, went to BYU, and uh, I always wanted to be a writer. But when I came out of college, I was offered a job working for my brother in Arizona. I decided that's not what I wanted to do for long term, so I was going to go back to school. When I was in Provo working, uh, I became aware of a job, actually the ag job, writing job up here at Harris Publishing. Came up and interviewed, I got the job. I, had, I hadn't snowmobiled very much before, but I did work on a farm when I was growing up. So it was a pretty good fit. I could write, I liked to write, and as I worked in the ag publications, Steve invited me to go 
snowing building a couple of times, and that was a lot of fun. I'd been maybe once or twice before, so it was fun. So I had, I did have some exposure to it and thought that was fun. So when the opportunity came to, uh, between the, the boat and the snowmobile job, there really wasn't too much of a decision for me to want to go to snowmobiling because it was so much fun. And, you know, it was a lot of work when I first started because I had to not only learn the industry log uh, lingo and all those things that go on in the snowmobile industry, but I had to learn to be a better writer so that I could write about my writing. <laughs> So in my job, being in the marketing end, I do get to interact with a lot of different vendors, different people. I get to see both the advertiser and I get to work with our subscribers. So it's very rewarding because I get to see both sides of the coin that maybe not everyone else gets to. Um, I do a lot of traveling with the job and interacting with our, our advertisers, the people that work directly with the magazine, and it's become a real family. Um, we all look out for one another as we're traveling and going to the different shows, and I have those people that are subscribers and have become friends. They'll come up to me for, at the different shows and they give me hugs and, and we know each other, you know. We know how long they have been with Snow West and it's, it's a family. The snowmobilers are a family. And our team, Steve, Lane, Ryan, um, Greg, Dean and now Merlin, all have that same love for the sport. Um, they're not just getting data and putting together the stories. They're really out there riding. They love what they do and it shows in what we do in Snow West. Snow West Magazine is the authority for Western snowmobiling because it is the sole mountain sled publication. You know, our pages are dedicated to mountain snowmobiles. You know, we don't cover uh, in the same way that we don't focus on mountain sleds and then try to cover the trail segment and the race segment and the sports segment. We are just mountain snowmobilers. And we don't try to cover the trail and the ditch banger stuff because we're not. We, we're not. we don't live in that part of the country that rides like that. We don't understand it completely, so we can't really speak with authority to that. But we can on mountains. We live in the mountains. You know, we could ride. 35, 40 minutes from the office, we could be on snowhead up some of the steepest mountains in the area.